Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome to the Garden Report. After hours here at TD Garden. Yes, sir. Will it be the last game at TD Garden this year? That's what we're wondering now after the Celtics beat the Mavs. 105-98. A better effort early from Dallas. They won the first quarter. Got out to a strong start. Uh, but they end up fading from this game behind some great passing from Jason Tatum on another night where he shot poorly. Uh, Peyton Pritchard had a shot to take a five-point lead to eight going into the fourth quarter. And then Boston held off Dallas's 9-0 run at the end of the fourth that nearly tied this game. Big block at the end of that run from Brown, White, both in there in transition that prevented this from becoming a one-possession game with about 30, 40 seconds to go. Uh, and the Celtics take a 2-0 lead in these NBA Finals. We're brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS for a 100% deposit match up to $100. Josue Pavone here, Noah Dalzell from Celtics blog. Uh, let's start with Tatum, 6 of 22. The shooting struggles continue. They've really been playoff long shooting struggles for him. He started 1 and 9 in this one, missed layups. Some real frustrating offensive possessions from him early in this game. But then he found that out with Drew Holiday, 17 first half points. Just dump off after dump off to him. And he ends this one with 12 assists. Incredible. I mean, look, I, I just think that when people want to pinpoint his scoring and how he's not putting up all these big scoring numbers throughout the entire playoff, not just in the finals, right? I think you overlooking how deep this team is, right? And I think that when you talk about what Joe Mazzullo has been saying all year long, reading opposing teams' defenses, making the right plays, executing, he did that. He did that a lot in this game. I, I thought he did a better job than what we saw in game one. And Drew Holiday, with the, just attacking the paint, those extra passes, I, I thought was a big part of what Tatum was doing, making sure that ball was flowing. And then he found his offense. You know, he got to the free throw line before going into the second half. Continue to attack, um, continue to apply that pressure on Dallas's defense while the Celtics did the exact thing on the other end of the floor. You know, in, what I really liked about the other guys, so to speak, right, whether it was Drew Holiday, Derek White, you know, people who just who could make those big plays, make buckets on both ends of the floor. I just think the way they make the Dallas Mavericks just wear thin defensively is what makes them so like the gap, the talent gap between these two teams that much significant because those are the guys who are usually applying that pressure whereas the Dallas Mavericks don't have those quote-unquote other guys outside of Luka and outside of Kyrie Irving. I'll throw the defense in there too Noah. He was switching on the Luka every possession in the first half of yeah. this game almost. Yeah it felt like Luka was hunting him early on maybe to give him a little taste of his own medicine of like well I'll make you work on defense and tire you out um, but I thought offensively the Celtics played one of my favorite games of the season, despite the fact they obviously shot really poorly and, and individually, nobody was on fire. Nobody really had it going yeah. necessarily. Even Drew Holiday, who had a great shooting, you know, great numbers. It wasn't like he was hitting any crazy shots. I mean, he had some of the easiest baskets of his, of his life, probably, right? Yeah, it was up and under um, pretty, though. Yeah, yeah but this is nice. tough. Yeah, yeah so I mean, the way right. he I mean, his body and stuff been, like that, yeah. And the way he's been finishing around the rim this playoff run has been a little bit underrated. Yeah. Like, much such an improvement from the regular season. But what I loved was how Jason Tatum, it felt like at one point it clicked for him that he didn't need to be, he didn't need to score, really. You know. Like, in fact, he, he probably could have gone without shooting the rest of the game and, and it would have helped because, like he said, he dribbles the ball. Guys collapse on him. They're playing him physical and he's become a very good passer. And yeah. so it's an asset. Like, there are lots of players who have made their name as, you know, pass first players. Yeah. I almost feel like in this series, he kind of has to be a fast for, uh, pass first player because he has the outlets. Yeah. He has the talent around him. It's not like he's kicking it out to guys that can't hit the open shot. He's kicking it out to all stars, well, you know? That, you know. That's the kind of pressure the Mavericks are doing right now to the Celtics, right? They're forcing the other guys to go out there and make big shots or make big plays and they're taking him up on that offer and what, what drew holiday did here in game two i mean he was incredible and i think a lot of the times the dallas mavericks are are, are thinking that they're gonna that, that that's gonna slow down at some point but it doesn't because they share the wealth it's not just one or two guys and then when you have jalen making defensive plays when you have guys getting back on defense the athleticism you're seeing that in a big way and i think the dallas mavericks are having a really hard time matching that yeah and we talked before the game though uh, about whether Dallas would switch up their approach on Tatum. They really didn't. There were still crowds. No. There were still multiple bodies inside against him. So he had to keep passing. And they're going to sell out to take him out of these games as a scorer. It looks like the rest of the way. And so he has to do it again, again, again. Limit turnovers. He only had three tonight. Uh, so all that stuff was great. And in contrast, Luca, uh, who had 30 points again tonight in this game, a hot start, 9-13, getting shots up over Tatum, white the guards. 
was beating everybody from that short mid-range area. They were able to really limit him in that second half, force turnovers. They started going to some traps against him and frustrate him in a big way to the point where he basically just gave up on that play that Drew hit uh, what should have been his three that slammed the door. Dallas ends up coming back a little bit after that, including a three-point play from Luka. Uh, but they're forcing turnovers. They're forcing frustration. Whatever injury trouble he's dealing with, too, they're trying to make him work on the defensive end. And I thought going at him a little bit is what actually got Tatum going in this game. So right now, Kyrie struggles. He was a little bit better tonight. Not much better. And Luka, they were able to, despite the 30 points he scored, I thought really put him in a difficult position, especially after halftime. Yeah, I mean, definitely. You saw him just, he just looked gassed out there. You know, we talked about it during the Celtics post game show. I think he rested maybe two minutes in that first half to go back in the second half. And I thought the Celtics just, they, they were, they took it up a notch, you know, on, on defense. And um, it made life hard for him. There was a lot of those plays where I feel like he was dribbling into the trap, trying to dribble out of it, trying to dribble back into it. And all of a sudden, there's four seconds left on the shot clock and he's throwing it out to whoever's open. And, you know, it's just, that's exactly what you want if you're the Celtics. And then those turnovers typically turn into a bucket or those terrible misses turn into a fast break layup and the Dallas Mavericks just couldn't keep up yeah definitely and I think the other part of tonight is that it really was like Joe kind of said right off the bat you know this was an all-around team effort he pointed to Peyton Pritchard's heave as one of the key plays or the key play of the night um but in reality, like I think it was one of those games that was just a full team effort in the sense that they just Jalen Brown said a post game like they played harder than the Mavs, yeah. um, and if the Celtics are playing harder than any team in the NBA at this point, they're going to win because they're more talented, right? And they've talked about it all year, like how can we be the more talented team and also keep our foot on the gas and be the harder playing team? And with this Mavs team, like the Mavs have to play harder than them, and we did not do that tonight. Yeah. Uh, and there were you know a lot of mistakes made. Jalen referenced that they were crisper in game one. Um, that the defensive execution was better. Obviously, the shooting was better in game one. Um, but it didn't matter because I think all those kind of hustle plays, those 50-50 balls, um, lots of key defensive plays, as you guys mentioned, um, were all kind of the Celtics, you know, the Celtics direction. And, and Luka, again, hot start, and he did fade towards then. I don't know if it was his injuries or, you know, the defensive pressure or, you know, just it's another factor. I thought he looked healthy as far as just the way he was moving from the beginning. Yeah, sure. um, so personally, I don't think the injuries were really like a huge factor of what we saw tonight. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a, just a really, really impressive all around win. And so they're moving on to game three. If you want tickets, if you're in Texas, if you're thinking of going down there, try to potentially see the Celtics clinch the series. Go to the game time app, download it, see what seats are available. Maybe Dallas fans are starting to not believe anymore. I bet prices <laughs> went down. I bet they, they went down after up. this. They don't want to pull up. Like, this, is where you take advantage. The this is where you take over. Celtics fans have done this all year. They've taken over the visiting arenas. So check out game time, see what they have to offer. And use code yeah. CLNS uh, to get $20 off your first purchase over there. Of course, terms apply. Uh, we'll see if Porzingis goes. He did get injured in the second half. Wouldn't reveal what it was specifically, but said he was limited to some degree. Had a sub out late uh, when they were going double big and Horford closed this game. I thought he had a solid start. First half looked good again. A block, a foul, uh, forced on defense. The couple, defense, couple and shots, then, yeah. yeah, a couple of shots. Yeah, so he looked good. He, he came out to a similar start, but second half you really saw him laboring. Said it wasn't related to the injury he suffered uh, earlier this spring that kept him out for so long. And uh, they're gonna try to have him ready for that game three over the next couple of days. Here, uh, he intends to be out there, but is there any concern? Missoula said zero, but. That's Surprise was at that zero. I was like, zero is a very definitive statement considering yeah. we haven't even like talked to the medical staff. Are I'm you assuming. really surprised though? A Dumas, little. Has he, Joe Mazzula ever shown concern over an injury? But he normally just has, I have, I have no idea. I haven't talked to anybody, you know, even like I'm thinking Sam Hauser, that sprained ankle. It would look like a pretty innocuous sprained ankle in Washington, D.C. In, in March. And he was like, I have no idea. He's getting x-rays. I feel like this was one of those times where he could you have thought, said. thought he'd go no idea instead of the he's fine. Yeah, I thought he's going to okay, no idea. Gotcha. Also, did, do we know if it was a specific play or because I didn't realize he was hobbled until all of a sudden it was all over my timeline. Like, I didn't realize <laughs> watching the game. Yeah. He wasn't Honestly. moving well. And maybe no, it was an accumulation. So it wasn't one moment. It was just... Xanis thought he saw one. I didn't see one. Uh, so it just so, seemed like it kind of built up to it. Because it got worse. Yeah. And oh, okay. then they had to take him out. Uh, but are you concerned, Josue? I know you talked to him for a second. Um, somewhat. Um, I, I think moving forward, I, you know, the, the the extra days stop right after Game Three, if I'm not mistaken, or at least between three and four. So I'm between three and four, and then it's back to two. And then it's back to two, right? So I I I'm hoping this extra day, um, you know, is, is significant for him in terms of getting back. But 
uh, is he going to look like game one? I'm not quite sure. You know, as long as he's effective, I thought he did a good job here tonight. I know second half, he kind of, like you said, kind of trailed off a bit. But um, I, I'm not overly concerned because of what the Celtics team has been doing, especially without him. But, of course, you wonder what he's going to look like in game three. And I think, uh, again, you, he's going to play through it. Yeah, no, he'll definitely play through it. Well, if we're talking about if he's going to play, no, I'm not yeah. concerned at all about that. He's going to give it a go for sure. Um, I just wonder what he looks like after after game three. Um, but this is a big win. You know, if it doesn't go out there and, and grab one more. And the Dallas Mavericks are in a space where it's like, you know, do we really want to go back to Boston? You know, <laughs> just like naturally as a team. We've seen that throughout uh, the playoffs for sure. I mean, Indiana Pacers, you, we don't want to label it as like they gave up, but it's just naturally when the no, Celtics... Pacers didn't give up. But... Right. But that, I think the better way to put it is that the Celtics sort of smelled blood. Yeah. And then I, I think if you go into a game four down 3-0, you know, the Celtics up 3-0, second half, if you've got like a 10-point lead, you can really put a team away, you know, I think when you're in that spot. So game three will be, will be a big one. But I, I'm hoping that um, I'm hoping, that, again, that Chris Stapps, that'll be the better game out of the two. If I'm if I'm predicting that is a sweep in play. Noah? It's in play. It has to be in play. I was thinking as we were packing up our stuff, I was like, are we going to be back in the garden this year? Yeah, that's what I've been thinking uh, about the last 10 minutes. I was getting sentimental. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I, I think they're going to get at least one. <laughs> Dallas is going to get I at least so, one. That's what I'm thinking. Um, they have the talent. They have the firepower. And again, um, one thing that has, I've been thinking about this entire time is that Drew Holiday was on a team that was down 0-2. Um, and, you know, he was asked, sort of asked about it postgame. And, yeah. and, you know, teams come back from being down 0-2. It's not common. It's unlikely. But Kyrie referenced it in his postgame comments. He said, we were, I was down 0-2 in 2016, obviously. Didn't play well in those first two games. Um, so this series is not over. I don't think that anybody should be thinking this is in the bag because they pulled out two wins. There's a lot more basketball to be played. And yeah. there's a lot of talent and a lot of firepower on the other side. Uh, that being said, I originally predicted Celtics in six. I don't think it's going to take six games, but I do feel confident they're going to get they're going to get it done. We're also brought to you by HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Garden Apps right now and get a free appetizer in every box uh, as you Such as long as you deal. use it. Yeah, Yo. it's it's going to be there for as long as you use it. And you'll want to keep using it because you can customize what's in it every week. It's all prepackaged. It makes the cooking easy. You think cooking's a little daunting? Not with HelloFresh. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Garden Apps and get that uh, offer for as long as you use. A little fresh. That's a great part about it. It's for life. Uh, so he is Josue Pavone. She is Noe Dalzell from Celtics Blog. And we are on to Dallas. All three of us will be down there for Maverick Celtics game three in a couple of days. So uh, we'll have practice coverage on Tuesday and then game three on Wednesday. So a couple more days for Porzingis to heal up, guys to get right and get prepared for that game. Because uh, Dallas is going to have to throw one more big punch here uh, to save their season, save their chances in this series. Uh, that's it here. Celtics win 105-98. Two wins from a championship. Uh, that's they are crazy. On the <laughs> precipice yeah. of what they want to do this year, and they are doing a great job uh, playing consistent, pulling out tough wins. Like Noah said, winning when they're not playing well. So that's what they did here tonight, and that's a wrap for us. We'll see you in Dallas. Bye, man. There's been a After Hours edition of the Garden Report. Joseph Pavone here, CLNS Media. And if you made it this far, that means you really like this video. So hit subscribe. Make sure you keep our notifications on, damn it. And we got plenty of uh, great content coming your way.